Happy Monday, it's Eric Plantenberg. I'm gonna talk about compromise this week. And this is a topic that I think is really important. It relates to so many of the interpersonal relationships that we have. And I think that there is absolutely a time and a place for it. And then I think that a lot of people use it quite ineffectively. Uh, last week, Michelle and I talked about what do you do if your pa partner or your significant other spouse is not on the same page with you with your goals and it inspired a lot of personal questions uh, about this topic of compromise and how do you navigate through it. So for starters, the definition of compromise is a concession that is mutually made by both, by both partners, basically meeting in the middle. And again, compromise as a, as a concept, I think that it is fine. And here's where it's fine. I think that compromise is great for a short term. I also think it's great as it relates to actions that people take. So for example, if two people have decided we are going here, you know, we're we're on a road trip to California and you know, one person, you, you both definitely want to get to the same place and one person wants to go through the Rockies and the other person wants to go further south through the desert and fundamentally you both have different ideas on how to get there, you know, a meeting in the middle is, is definitely a good idea because both of you want to get to the same place and there's many ways to, to, you know, to get to home. If you want to go out to a restaurant and half of the party wants Italian food, half of the party wants Mexican food and you end up compromising and landing on pizza, that's great. So I guess pizza is Italian food there, so that might not be a compromise. But you know what I'm saying in that the actions that you take about how do you get to what you ultimately want, which for the dinner party is a bunch of people that have food in their bellies, is really, really good. Tracking back to last week, most of the people that are stuck with their spouse or partner, whether it's in a work situation or whether it's in a romantic relationship, whatever the dynamic of that relationship is, the question that I always ask people is what is behind the being stuck on your goals? So if your spouse doesn't support you running marathons or starting a new business or whatever it is that, that it is that you want to do, my question is, is what are they afraid of? What is the, the issue behind it? And almost always two answers come up and I'm open that there's a lot more than two, but what I hear over and over and over again is number one is that my partner doesn't want me to outgrow them. My partner doesn't want to be left behind. You know, if I develop this new group of friends, if I further my education, if I propel my life forward, that, you know, they're really happy where they're at and potentially we would grow apart or they would, would, wouldn't want to be left behind. The second answer that I hear is that, well, we won't spend enough time together because my spouse or partner is just not interested in this thing that I'm really passionate about and we won't spend as much time together and potentially we could grow apart. Okay, these are, these have nothing to do with compromise in my mind. So if your partner is feeling like they're going to get left behind, there's a fundamental insecurity about who they are and there's a fundamental holding back about what you want to do and how you want to grow and what your potential is. So here's when I would never it inspire someone to, to compromise and this is when, when I don't compromise is on your emotional state and on your bigger picture vision of where do you want to take your life and I'm going to tell you why I don't compromise on this in just a minute but for starters if your partner or spouse wants to go off and do something that is outside of, of your normal life or maybe it's the way you want to do you've got some dreams and goals you want to start that business or, or travel somewhere or learn a new language or do something sub significant and your partner is putting on the brakes on that because you they feel like they'll outgrow you it is not worth checking your goals and dreams at the door for someone else's insecurity or someone else not landing on who they are or where they're at. What Michelle talked about last week, I think is really important. The ability for a person to give themselves permission to feel insecure and to feel potentially left out. You know, this is a natural part of growth. Uh, what I've observed in my closest, longest relationships is, is that there are times of ebb and, ebb and flow 
There's times where I go left and people go right. And that it gives us both space to grow and to grow into who we are and for both of us to mature. Nobody gets left behind with two people growing. And if you're in a business partnership and one of the people wants to really grow and the other person is really static, that's a great indicator that that business partnership is going to complete its life cycle pretty soon. It doesn't mean that the person are bad or that there's anything wrong with what the individuals want to do. It's just that every relationship does have a life cycle. Even your committed marriage that you're going to spend your life together, eventually it ends. So instead of being worried about how long is this relationship going to go and how can we compromise meaning, how can we check the things that we really care about and that fill our hearts, I suggest and what I do is let them flourish, let them grow and expand and watch both people grow into, into new passions and new developments. Two growing people doing different things will have a lot to talk about. They'll have a lot of interest. They'll have a, a, a lot to share with each other. It doesn't have to be the same thing. Great example of this in our life is that Michelle recently decided to pick up the cello. Now, Michelle loves music and playing the cello, it's a new instrument for her. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of money. It's a, just a, it's a big commitment. Well, Every evening, there's lots of things that I would rather do than uh, do the dishes or to do household chores. But this is really important to Michelle. So while she practices cello after the kids are down to bed, I do dishes, I clean the house, I make sacrifices. Now this isn't a compromise. This isn't us meeting in the middle. This is both of us expanding. This is both of us saying, let's make this work, let's grow. Let's figure out a way to both get bigger, both get more capable, and support each other, take care of each other in ways that help each other grow. So since then, I've been listening to a lot more TED Talks and audio programs that I'm really interested in that sometimes I have the story that I don't have enough time for um, while I'm doing the dishes, while I'm sweeping the floor, picking up after the kids. You can make any situation a win-win if you get creative and if you figure out how to how to, how to make it all work for both of you. Along this topic, this is really important, is that the mental picture, your intention, and the emotional body of state, they never need to get withdrawn. Again, your, your intention, your goal, it's in the future. It's not even in this moment. What's in this moment is your state and your actions. So will I find a, a mutually workable agreement when both people are going in the same direction for how do we navigate in this moment? Absolutely. I think that that's super important. Would I ever ask a friend, business partner, Michelle, anyone to change their goals and dreams, to change the picture that they have in their head about what they're passionate about, to meet my thoughts on their life? No, that's, uh, that's me running their life. Will I communicate honestly where, wh how I feel about it? Of course, and that's what I would want in return. This is a, again, it's a very, very big topic and in a future post, I'm going to talk more about how do you overcome the being left and not spending enough time with your partner. Now it's not the, oh, I'm, I feel like they're going to outgrow me. It's the, well, we're actually not spending time together anymore and what do you do about that? I think that's a very different topic. So lots of questions here. I know that this is a brief overview of a much longer, a much longer topic. If you have questions, let me know and have fun with that. Have an amazing week.